and welcome back to my tech wardrobe. My name is Caitlin and today we're talking about Princess Diana. Princess Diana, Diana Princess of Wales, Lady Diana Spencer, if you are not aware, uh, was the first wife of Prince Charles, son of uh, Queen Elizabeth of England, who tragically Diana passed away in 1997 in Paris in a car accident. But prior to that, she made quite the mark on the cultural zeitgeist. Now, here's the thing, seeing a lot of articles lately, a lot of YouTube videos about how to emulate Diana's style, and I kind of just wondered, like, why? <laughs> well, I don't have any real living memory of her or her style, and growing up, what I did see was basically like this. Very peak 80s, uh, her wedding dress from 1981 was the wedding dress of the time, and it's sort of quintessentially like puffy 80s. <laughs> so growing up, I never considered her any particularly massive style icon. So now as an adult, I'm starting to sort of see her come up continually in the conversation around sort of street style and fashion. But I have a couple of theories. The first is pretty obvious, but people right now, particularly Gen Z, are looking back to the 80s and 90s for their fashion cues and to the icons of those eras as well. And Princess Diana was a big one. So her style influenced people around the globe. So much like today, if Kate Middleton or Meghan Markle shops somewhere and is interested in a particular designer or wears that particular designer, they sell out immediately. But it was very much the same in Diana's state as well. And some fashion retailers as well are still manufacturing facsimiles of her clothing. So she was definitely an icon of her time. And if you're gonna look back, you're going to see her street style, for example, which has become more popular in recent years with stars like Hailey Bieber and other models off duty recreating it. I think especially during sort of COVID pandemic times, people are really looking back to uh, ways to blend the casual into the everyday. And of course, the rise in popularity of shows like Netflix's The Crown, or movies like Spencer, for which Kristen Stewart just got nominated for an Oscar, like, good for you, Bella, I'm very proud. But of course, people are looking at those pieces of media and seeing all of these really interesting and intricate outfits. And the fashion in those films really does tell a story. So I think that's engaging people right now too. Another theory I have is that people are also obsessed with what may have been. I, in the course of my research for this video, I saw a lot of articles saying something like what Princess Diana would have worn had she been alive. What charity she would have supported if she continued to live. So for the same reason you see a long dead celebrity singer be recreated as a hologram at a concert, people are constantly speculating as to what that fashion legacy could have been if she had lived on. We also, because of this, have a finite amount of photos and video to really draw from. I mean, she was only really in the public eye for just under 20 years. So I think that is a really interesting finite amount of outfits that people are sort of skimming through to, to look at. So I think that adds some um, mystique and interest to the whole thing too. So in the course of my research, I just found it so sort of sad but empowering that she was able to use clothing to assert a sense of freedom over the situation in which she found herself because her life was not without difficulty despite living a royal life. And she had a very complicated life, but I think every time you see her wear a particular outfit, it's designed to either provoke a reaction or to make her feel a certain way. So you saw this specifically with that gorgeous what is called the revenge dress. The black revenge dress, right after Prince Charles televised an interview in which he admitted to cheating on her. She was photographed that very evening wearing this and totally took back that narrative. So I think it's just a very interesting lesson in using fashion 
the way that you want to use it and expressing yourself and sending a message to other people through the very clothes on your back. You know, we do these how to recreate this style, but really I always bring it back to like style is a feeling and style is a message that you're sending to the world. So she sent a very strong message with every item that she chose. So I really encourage you to do the same. But I didn't want to just take my own opinion because like I said, I was really young when she died. So I don't remember the furor around Princess Diana and her life, but I do know someone who did. Hi, mom. Hi. You were an adult in the 80s and 90s, right? I think so. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I was in my 30s. Do you, give me a little taste for what life was actually like when she was alive. It was really kind of frumpy and, and old fashioned. And then as she was going through her marriage, she was still a little frumpy. And then, and then when she started getting a little bit more self-assured, like she would look up and she would, uh, it's actually when they started divorcing and when she, she redid her whole outlook, her fashion got so much better and she was so much confident and she showed a lot more skin. She never showed skin at the beginning, but then afterwards she did. And do you, do you remember people talking about or ever even really caring about what she wore at the time? Like, did that, yeah. did that influence anything in terms of, like, 80s and 90s women's style, like, in your own orbit or anything? No, I don't think it influenced me, because her fashion still wasn't my kind of fashion. I think she would influence more of the, the richer people, not common people like me. <laughs> <laughs> I won't be super comprehensive here, but I'll walk you through examples of outfits that Princess Diana had worn throughout her lifetime that might be more easily recreated by you at home. Because let's face it, we're not all going to go out and buy exact facsimiles of outfits that she wore and we're not gonna spend a ton of money on designer pieces. So here's how you can get the look and emulate it and emulate the principles without necessarily breaking the bank. We're going super casual first. So every time I see a Diana re outfit recreation, somebody's in bike shorts. Hailey Bieber recreated this pretty much exactly for Vogue and we've sort of seen the, the copycats from there. But if this is a look that appeals to you for any particular reason, you can recreate it, thankfully, extremely easily. So all you need is a pair of bike shorts in any color. These were peach, but I have blue, so that's what I've done. And I've drawn a similar color in the sweater from the blue of the bike shorts. So you can do this with pretty much any pair of bike shorts and any crew neck sweater or even turtleneck sweater as well. And if you wanna add a pair of sunglasses and a handbag while you're on the go, then more power to you. <laughs> I have my Nike Cortlands here with a pair of really cute sort of decorative, really thin socks, but you can make this a little bit more utilitarian and put some tube socks or ankle socks with that and a pair of actual runners like Diana did as she was running errands. So this sort of look compilation is pretty much up to you, but the items within it are actually very functional and very easily converted. It's not my personal favorite look, but if you really like a comfy casual for running errands or what have you, then this is a good one. Another thing that Diana always did really well was what we now call today smart casual. And smart casual is really just a mix of fancier and more casual items to elevate the entire look. She was pretty much a, a genius at it. <laughs> I think whenever I look at her, looks, they're always very well put together when it comes to the smart casual side. So this one is simply a pair of pants and shirt in the same color, shoes in the same color, in this case black with a blue blazer. Now I didn't have that exact blue blazer, but I have this oversized red one that sort of emulates the same feeling. And you can do this very easily by keeping it all monotone for your outfit, but then putting a colorful blazer on top, maybe with a pair of sunglasses. And I think this is actually just a really great way to 
emulate that style without necessarily look like that's what you're trying to do. It just simply looks like a really put, well put together outfit. And you can do this with any type of oversized blazer. I like to do vintage as well and keep the top and the blazer in a similar pattern or color. In this case, I have a yellow blazer and a yellow shirt with a pair of pants and loafers, and it's very comfortable. So I would certainly take this style tip and run with it, because it's actually really good if you work in a casual work environment as well. Another thing that Diana did really well was the Canadian tuxedo, AKA denim on denim. There are a few instances in which she does this really well, and normally she's just either taking her kids on a holiday or vacation or running errands. And I think that this look is really nice because it's just, again, very, very simple. So I've just worn my high-waisted Levi's ribcage straight denim with my denim shirt and I added a, an oversized leather jacket to that as well. If you think about just how easy it is to create this look, I think it's really nice that you can still look like a princess without having to put in a ton of effort. She also loved a denim flats and button up shirt moment. <laughs> I think when we think about back to the Grace Kelly and Audrey Hepburn episodes that I did previously, they also enjoyed that silhouette. And I think it's because it's just timeless. So for me, this is something that I would just generally wear anyway. <laughs> I didn't even think about it being particularly 80s or 90s in style. It's just something I usually gravitate towards. So if that's you, you may be uh, embodying Princess Diana style already. Now, when you get into the 80s and 90s, you sort of see two different elements of her royal style come into play, particularly when we're talking formal events. So. In the 80s, she's still kind of coming into her own and you see these sort of grandiose ball gowns. You have her big puffy wedding dress from 1981. But then the silhouettes gradually after her divorce from Prince Charles was finalized in 1996, you see her not loosening up, but you know, the headlines get a little shorter. <laughs> so I think if you have a really great early 90s late 80s sort of structured dress in your closet or wardrobe already, you can actually make that look quite Diana-esque. So I have this one from the early 2000s actually, but it's modeled on a 90s design. And when I pair this with tights and a pair of black heels in the same color and maybe add a set of pearls, this is actually very Diana-esque. And the same with this orange sort of fitted dress. Now, I don't, I never saw Diana wear striped orange, but she did wear this sort of fitted silhouette more often. So if you have that kind of fitted, almost mini dress, but not quite in your wardrobe, this is actually the sort of Diana post separation and divorce type of era. And many consider that to be her most interesting fashion era anyway. So something to consider. So she also, as most royals do, make use of a belt with a coat quite frequently. So what I did was try to emulate this houndstooth coat look plus hat. Now I didn't completely nail it. I'm not going to lie to you. I kind of came off more like a uh, dollar store Blair Waldorf than Princess Diana, but you can see the general elements are there. So what I've done is taken a houndstooth sort of blazer jacket that I have and belt it with my black leather belt, put my black hat on top and paired it with a leather mini skirt tights and sort of platform loafer. This can apply to your wardrobe in many ways. So one thing I would definitely consider doing if you're looking to emulate or get inspiration from Princess Diana is to think about what coats you could belt. <laughs> because I think there's always a really interesting silhouette to be had from, from that. So what you can do is if you don't already have a leather belt, that you can come buy one very easily at a thrift or vintage store, and then take that home and figure out which coats are easier to belt for you than others. Maybe it's even just a blazer, but this is just a really great way to try to use your blazers also in different ways. 
and I think uh, royal style is often creative reuse type of style too. So when Diana was first coming into the public eye as Lady Diana Spencer pre-engagement and during the engagement to Prince Charles prior to 1981, she just sort of wore a lot of sweaters, sweater vests, pastels. I think this is a really typical sort of style for her era. So what I have done to recreate this is a couple of things. I have gone for a really overalls kind of look here. The blousy top that I have paired with it is definitely a puffy top, kind of reminiscent of early 80s. It's got that statement collar that she frequently wore and a pair of flats. So this is a really simple look to recreate. If you have a puffy shirt, it doesn't necessarily have to have a statement collar, but if it does, all the better. Just pair it with a pair of overalls, preferably flared overalls, but I don't actually have a pair of those, so. Another way that I kind of meant to emulate her more pastel flared outfits is this pair of pants, which is sort of in almost a mint green paired with a peach vest and blazer combo. Now this is not a one-to-one -one recreation. I'm kind of taking a page out of the crowns book and just getting creative, <laughs> but this is an outfit that uh, is reminiscent of the really late 70s, so it can kind of come into play here. The jacket and the vest are actually from the 70s themselves, so the pants have a bit of a nautical detail, which is something that Diana is known to have um, enjoyed, so I think even if you don't have the one-to-one -one recreations, you can still pay homage to the, the style theory of Diana. So if you're thinking early Lady Diana Spencer, you're thinking pastels and statement collars for sure. And this, what I'm wearing right now, is an example of that. So this is a vintage um, Peter Pan collar style top paired with a sweater vest and uh, a pair of jeans. So this is something that she would have kind of mucked around in um, in her early years. So if this is something that you already have, sweater vests are very much in style now, then this is, this is something you can use. The goal here is really to just get creative with your wardrobe. That's sort of the <laughs> name of the game in all of these videos. But if you're looking to emulate Diana's style specifically, these were just a couple of ways to hopefully help you do that. I'm interested to know whose style you wanna recreate or even someone's style that you would like to see me try to recreate. I'm up for a challenge. Thanks as always for watching. If you got it this far, why not subscribe? And if you didn't like it, subscribe anyway, cause it might be different next time. Bye. <laughs>